Welcome to this tutorial featuring a, a short, simple introduction on anatomy and the skeletal system. We will start by discussing the anatomical position. In this position, the body needs to be erect, straight. Both hands, both arms need to be hanging by the side, parallel. The palms need to be facing forward or upward, known as supination. And both feet need to be forward, parallel to each other. Together, these, this is known as the anatomical position. You might wonder why this is important. It is important because in anatomy, it provides a benchmark when you want to describe anything related to position or region. This will be further clarified as we go along this tutorial. Terms of regions. The body contains seven regions. They are the cranial region, the cervical region, the thoracic region, the abdominal region, the pelvic region, plantar, which is uh, facing the, the soles of the feet, and palmar, facing the palms of the hands. Terms of position. Superior is equivalent to cranial, which is equivalent to rostral, which is also known as nearer to the head. Inferior, equivalent to caudal, is away from the head. Medial, equivalent to proximal, is nearer to the median plane, or nearer to the trunk. Distal, equivalent to lateral, is away from the median plane, away from the trunk. Anterior, equivalent to, ver uh, to ventral, is nearer to the front. Posterior, equivalent to dorsal, dorsal is nearer to the back. Superficial, is nearer to the skin, the skin surface, and deep is nearer to, away from the skin, nearer to the bones and muscles. Terms of movement. In anatomy, we describe movement with specific terms. We'll start by flexion and extension. Flexion is when you decrease the angle between two parts. Extension is when you increase the angle between those two parts. So when you kneel down, you are flexing. And when you straighten up from that kneel, you are extending. This can be demonstrated by a rukur, or in the arm, when you flex your arm, uh, making your forearm uh, touch your arm and your hands touching your shoulders. When you Separate them away, increasing the angle between them. This is known as extension. Next is abduction and adduction. Abduction, taken from the word abdu abduct, which is to take away, to take away from the medium plane. So when you move your arm away from your trunk, this is known as abduction. When you bring it closer to the trunk, it's called adduction, from the word ad. Opposition is when you bring the tips of the fingers to the thumb in an act of picking up something, or when we do the religious tasbih. Circumduction is a combination of all four movements, flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. Lateral rotation is rotating the arm or the limb away from the medium plane, which is also no known as supination. Medial rotation is the opposite. It is rotating the limb towards the medium plane, known as pronation. The abdominal pelvic region is divided into nine small regions or compartments by two vertical planes, known as the subclavicular lines, and two horizontal planes, known as the subcostal and the inter intertubercal lines. These nine compartments are the umbilical, the, the epigastric, the hypogastric, the right hypochondria, the right lumbar, the right iliac, the left hypochondria, the left lumbar, and the left iliac. This is important when we are trying to locate the different organs in each region. Because the abdominal pelvic area harbors so many or internal organs like the liver, the uh, part of the small intestine, the colon, part of the stomach, the pancreas, spleen, part of the kidneys, it is important to know these nine regions when you're describing the location of an organ. 
body planes, and sections. To look at internal structures, the body is cut into sections along imaginary lines called planes. These are three types of sections that are at right angle to one another, which are known as the sagittal or mid-sagittal, the frontal or coronal, and the transverse or, or horizontal. The frontal plane or the, coron the coronal plane is a cut made along the longitudinal plane, dividing the body into anterior and posterior parts. The transverse or, or horizontal or cross section is a cut made along the horizontal plane, dividing the body into superior and inferior parts. The mid-sagittal or the sagittal plane is a cut made along the longitudinal plane, dividing the body into right and left parts. The plane crossing through the midline of the body, the central part of the body, the body or the trunk, cutting the body into two equal right and left halves, is called the mid-sagittal, or the medium plane. The body cavities. The body has two sets of internal cavities that lodge. The body cavities. The body has two sets of cavities that lodge and protect the internal organs. These are the dorsal body cavity and the ventral body cavity. The dorsal body cavity has two subdivisions, which are continuous with each other. They're known as the cranial cavity, which is the space inside the bony skull and contains the brain, and the spinal cavity, a space inside the vertebral column containing the spinal cord. The ventral body cavity has two subdivisions, which are separated from each other by the diaphragm. These two ca cavities are the thoracic cavity, which, line, uh, which lies superior to the diaphragm, uh, containing the heart and the lungs, and the abdominal pelvic cavity, which lies inferior to the diaphragm, containing the stomach, intestines, urinary bladder, liver, reproductive organs, rectum, and, and so many other structures. The skeletal system contains two major components, the bones and the joints, further known as articulations. These bones and joints support the body organs, protect the soft body organs such as the liver and the, lo the lungs, the heart. They give attachment to muscles. They help in storage of fat and minerals such as calcium and phosphorus. They help in production of RBCs and they help with the movement of the body. The bones are further classified on the basis of their shape into long bones, such as the humerus or the femur, short bones, such as the carpals of the hand, fat bones, such as the parietal bone of the skull, and irregular bones, such as the bones of the vertebral column, or the vertebrae. They are further divided according to their structure into compact bone and spongy bone. And they're further divided according to their development into membranous or cartilaginous bones. This is a picture illustrating the long bones. Each long bone has a central portion called the shaft, or the diaphysis. This part is composed of compact bone, covered on its external surface by a fibrous connective tissue membrane called the periosteum. The periosteum protects the bone, it gives attachment to muscles, carries blood vessels and nerves to the bone, deposits new bone on the surface, thus increasing the girth of the bone. The shaft has a cavity in the center called the marrow cavity. In adults, the marrow cavity is a storage area for fat and contains yellow marrow. In infants, it contains red marrow and it's a site for formation of RBCs. The two ends are the epiphysis. Each epiphysis is composed of spongy bone lined by a thin layer of compact bone. Its external surface is covered by a single, single hyaline cartilage called the articular cartilage. This cartilage provides a smooth, slippery surface to decrease the friction at the joint surfaces. At the junction between both the epiphysis and the diaphysis, the area is called the metaphysis. This metaphysis contains a thin plate of cartilage called the epiphyseal plate. This is responsible for the long width, the long wise growth of the long bones.
which means increasing the length of the bones. The skeleton. There are about 206 bones in our body, which are, are, which are arranged in a form and a framework called the skeleton. The skeleton is perfectly adapted to, function, to functions of the body, such as protection and motion. It is further subdivided into two divisions, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton are bones that form the longitudinal axis of the body, which are the skull, sternum, ribs, and vertebral column. The appendicular skeleton, which are the bones of, of the limbs and the girdles, form the upper and lower limbs and the two girdles, the pelvic and the pectoral girdles. We will start by discussing the axial skeleton. First, we have the bones of the skull. We have the frontal bone, the parietal bone, the temporal bone, the occipital bone, and the sphenoid bone. Together, these bones form the cranium. Then we have the mandible, the maxilla, the zygomatic bones, and the nasal bones, which form the facial bones. The second part of the axial skeleton is the vertebral column. It forms the axial support of the body. It is a flexible curved structure forming formed by 33 irregular bones, known as the vertebra. Running through these bones is an empty tube known as the central canal. Inside the central canal runs the spinal cord. The, ver the vertebral column is divided, divided into five regions. The first region is known as the cervical region, and it contains the first seven vertebra. The second region, known as the thoracic region, contains 12 uh, vertebrae. The lumbar region contains 5 vertebrae. The sacral region, containing 5 vertebrae, fused together to form a triangular bone, known as the sacrum. The coccygeal area, containing 4 vertebrae, fused together to form a small bone called the coccyx. The third part of the axial skeleton is the sternum, which is a flat bone and it's, and it's made out of three main parts, the manubrium, the body, and the xiphoid process. The last part of the axial skeleton are the ribs. There are 12 pairs of ribs. All the ribs are articulate together posteriorly with the ribs, and anteriorly only the upper seven articulate with, this, with the sternum. Next, we will be discussing the appendicular skeleton which is made out of two parts, the girdles, the pectoral and the pelvic, and the upper and lower limbs. The pelvic, the pelvic and the pectoral girdles, they help connect the bones of the limbs to the, to the axial skeleton. The pectoral girdle is made out of two main bones, the clavicle, for, further known as the collarbone, and the scapula, further known as the shoulder blade. And the two pelvic girdles, which are known as the hip bones, and they help to connect the lower limbs with the axial skeleton. Bones of the upper limb. The upper limb is divided into three parts, the arm, forearm, and the hand. There is only one bone forming the arm, which is known as the humerus. The forearm is formed by two parallel bones, the ulna, which is more medial, closer to the trunk of the body or the axial section, and the radius, which is the lateral bone, farther away from the trunk. The last part of the upper limb is the hand. The hand is subdivided into three parts, eight carpals, five metacarpals, and 14 phalanges, two for each thumb and three for each of the four medial fingers. Lastly are the bones of the lower limb. The lower limb is made out of four parts, the thigh, knee, leg, and foot. The thigh is only made out of one bone known as the femur, very similar to the arm in the upper limb. The knee, medically known as the patella. 
The leg is made out of two parallel bones. The more medial bone is known as the tibia, and the lateral bone is known as the fibula, just like in the forearm. Lastly is the foot. It is very similar to the hand. It, is, it contains eight tarsals, equivalent to the carpals of the hand, five metatarsals, equivalent to the five metacarpals of the hand, and 14 phalanges, two for each toe and three for each of the four lateral toes. Thank you for watching the tutorial. I hope it was helpful.